Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I'm just sitting here drinking my morning coffee. And ready to start my day, get some training in here in another hour or so. But, someone linked me a video on my Facebook fan page, and then a bunch of people commented behind it. Uh, last night, like before I went to bed, with Larry Wheels with his day of eating. Now for those of you who like these type of videos, please remember to click like down below to offset those dislikes if you guys do so it would be greatly appreciated so please do that thank you so much over the point um this comes over to what i always say a lot of people lately have said jason you know you'll talk about the problems in bodybuilding but you don't talk about the health problems and bad things people do in your precious strength sports and, and the reality is i actually do um it's just that i try to keep stuff within a reasonable level Look, we know that in strength sports, in certain weight classes, there's an obesity problem, things like that. That's stuff that has to be addressed. Problem is, if I do that, it becomes individual attacks on the eating habits of individual people. It could be seen as personal attacks. Um, it, and it looks bad. It looks bad with federations and things like that I have a judge with. So I try to leave those things alone. But when it comes to the stuff with, with Larry, um, I think we need to talk about the health issues here. Uh, we need to talk about the health risks that Larry's taking and why Larry has been successful versus m my real concerns of when I see stuff. He's been getting hurt lately. His health is suffering in this video. He's describing major health problems. And this isn't meant as a form of attack on Larry. Because I've said before, in, in a way, I'm actually a fan of Larry's feats of strength. Right? I can actually appreciate and respect them. I, th I think the dude is ridiculously strong. And I'm always going to give credit for that, right? We have to. If, if you're serious about strength and Larry's moving the, the weights he is, you have to give credit for that, okay? That has to be done. Otherwise, you don't respect strength. But the problem has been the recklessness. Um, it's been the recklessness with his health, the recklessness of getting injuries and everything else uh, around all of that. He's been hurt a lot lately. Um, and I've kind of mentioned that, said, hey, it's... Larry, the question is, you're, you're pushing the limits of the amount of muscle and strength that your frame can physically support. Uh, the gear use has been excessive for quite a while now, to the point to where he has displayed possible health problems of bleeding from the head and everything else, bleeding from his neck during deadlifts, the falls, the trip-ups. He's been hurt twice recently. And it's because he's pushing the limits of what his frame will support in terms of muscle, due to the gear abuse and then the reckless lifting on top of it. You can't lift recklessly when you've pushed your muscle and strength beyond what your frame is intended to support. You can't do that. You'll get hurt. And he is getting hurt, and he's still continuing at all of this. Um, now, people say, well, Jason, why has he been so successful? Well, there's a massive genetic component, obviously. There's a work ethic component. Those are enormous. Those are near the top of the list. Because I can tell most of you guys out there, if you trained like Larry, you're not going to be at 50% of his strength. Most of us out here, if we did Larry's exact workouts and training, uh, a lot of our lifts wouldn't be 50 or 60% of what his are. This, let's just be realistic here. Be realistic, they wouldn't. Hopefully people out there realize that. But what do I tell people with powerlifting? Powerlifting is nothing more than a test of brute strength and it's relative to your frame size. That is what powerlifting is. If you are the shortest, leanest guy in your weight class, you will probably win if you're technically proficient on the lifts. That's the other caveat. You're probably going to win because body composition is one of the biggest factors in strength. It is largely the largest factor when it's been studied and looked at in the lab. And if you're shorter, you're moving the weight a shorter distance and you have more muscle as far as the percentage of your frame goes at any given weight, especially if you're leaner. Larry has pushed the limits of his body composition now, been largely due to gear use and genetics, um, and using a lot of gear from really early on in his training. Okay, that's allowed him to exceed the capacity of what his frame could hold. And people say, what do you mean he's not short? Larry is short relative to the weight classes he's doing. Okay, that doesn't mean he's not a fairly tall guy, because he actually is. But if you're an inch shorter than everybody else you're competing against in a class, you have an advantage got a leverage advantage, you got a body composition advantage. Larry's usually a pretty lean guy, okay? In other words, it is body composition and stacking his frame with as much muscle as it will hold that has been his key to success, and it has been. It has been. It's worked pretty well for him. 
till he kind of got on the social media thing and he's turned it into a big circus act. Now he's getting hurt all the time. Uh, but we come over to the other point. Larry is exceeding what his frame is intended to hold. That's the downside of doing what he's doing. He doesn't need to be going up weight classes, all right? Realistically, realistically, Larry needs to be competing in the 242. Maybe, maybe the 275. In fact, if he just stayed in the 275 uh, for the rest of his life, he could probably dominate and just do sheer body composition. All right, Larry doesn't need to be stepping outside of the 275. And quite frankly, 242, he could shine. He could shine with water cuts forever. But he's letting his ego get him. He's pushing his limits. And so we come over to all this bulking he's doing. All right. This big pile of supplements are useless. Um, and that bothered me right up front because you guys know I, I'm not a big fan of the supplement world. Right up front, this big line of supplements, half of which have been proven in meta-analysis not to benefit you as an athlete or lifter, like branched-chain amino acids. No expert anymore with, a, with, a, with an understanding of nutritional science or sports nutrition thinks supplementing BCAAs helps you in any way. Okay, It's not reasonable. It's right there. Middle of the mix. In fact, I've been sued over branched chain amino acids in the past. I was one of the early people saying, hey, these, these aren't good. And part, that, part of the factor of that, it ended up landing me in court. Um, I've been sued because of research on branched chain amino acids, and it later turned out the meta-analysis vindicated me. Right? This stuff's garbage. And that's the other thing that really bothered me. Larry is doing extremely unhealthy things, destroying his body on every level. And he's saying, I believe health is wealth while then promoting his health line of supplements down there. That stuff's not going to help you, Larry. All right, none of this stuff's going to help you. This stuff's all junk. But it's the, that's the thing, is that health is wealth, and he threw it out there. And I have to wonder, does he, does he really believe that? Because then he's describing his eating. He's gained 20 kilos in like a month. All right, and he's admitted it's muscle, water, fat, everything. Um, eating piles of junk food to the point to where he's gassy, bloating, diarrhea, struggling to walk, struggling to breathe, struggling to get depth on his squats without cramps and pumps in his back. I mean, this is a problem, right? That's not health. That's not health. And then to top it all off, his obsession with the protein powder. He admitted, hey, I'm li really lactose intolerant. Yeah, you've got to be pretty lactose intolerant to have problems with, with a whey protein, like, well, like Optimal Nutrition. They're actually a really high-quality company as far as the research goes. Like if you look at the independent stuff like on Consumer Reports, they actually have one of the purer protein powders out there. You're not really going to get much better than that. I mean, realistically, you're not. If that is giving you gas, you're way too lactose intolerant to be consuming whey protein. Yet he's taking all these scoops of it and admitting he's getting bloating and gas. All right, that's not helping you. That's not health. You need to find, eat whole foods in to get the protein you think you need at that point. That's ridiculous. You are not suited to consume protein powder. That is unhealthy in and of itself. If it's giving you gas and bloating, you need to not be consuming it. You need to cut it out. Hurting your health. Hurting your gastrointestinal system. This is not helping you. And that's a perfect example, you know, eating the pizza and the cheeseburgers and knocking down the junk, trying to bring his weight up right after multiple injuries. Guys, he's had two injuries recently, and yet he's still pushing his body weight up to be up over 300 pounds to the point to where he can't function day to day. It's affecting his training, and he's even like, oh, I'm not even really squatting, but I'll be fine at meet time. My physio's helping me. Um... No, this, is, this isn't healthy. What Larry's doing isn't healthy. And I've had some other lifters in the video we made the other day talking about the rotator cuff. Some pretty serious lifters come in and comment. And it's like, yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty well done. Uh, here's what someone has said in my comments the other day. And I agreed. Like, why didn't he just go to some of these other coaches? Why couldn't he go to someone like uh, Chris Duffin? And, and exactly, I think Larry would stop having these problems if he went and hired someone like uh, Chris over at Kabuki Strength. Someone like that would probably sort him out at this point. They could probably sort him out, but I don't think he's going to listen. I mean, we've got the case basically of, like we've talked about with with uh, the other injuries, Larry's ego's gone to his head. You know, the social media fame, 
all the stuff he's done, it is gone to his head with the ego that's already there. The heavy gear use combined with it can affect your brain, right? It can. You guys know that. Anyone who's used any significant amount of gear, you guys know how this stuff can affect your brain, especially the stronger androgens. It, it can turn you into an egomaniac. And so he's got the ego issue there. Um, just And just being generally reckless, right? And he probably doesn't think he's doing anything wrong. And that's, that's ultimately the problem, especially when he with a straight face right there at the start of the video can talk about the health supplement and say, I believe health is wealth. Right there in a video coming off of multiple major injuries, bulking and gaining 20 kilos in a month, can't breathe, talking about gas, diarrhea, talking about his, his butthole hurting. Okay, All in the same video. Health is wealth. I agree, man. Health is wealth. And in strength sports, we've got to start pushing health more. We, we really do. We have to take care of ourselves, guys. And I'm saying that as a master's lifter um, who, who is trying to get brutally strong again. I'm trying to get to an elite total again myself. Uh, I'm trying to get strong. But I'm in my 40s, man, and I agree health is wealth. We have to push that. We have to push it. That means staying within weight classes that are reasonable, not bulking on junk food, Right? Health is wealth. And I honestly hope for Larry's sake and for the sake of the sport that maybe he will step back and listen to his own words. Health is wealth, Larry. Take that to heart, brother. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.